Hello, everyone. I'm Eric D'Souza, and welcome to our continuing series of author interviews of Prime Writers of Canada members who have been shortlisted for the Awards of Excellence. Today, I'm talking to Catherine McDonald, whose book, So Many Windings, published by Bay Press, has been nominated for the Who Done It Award for Best Traditional Mystery, sponsored by Jane Doe. So in this category, even the sponsor is a mystery. Uh, so thank you very much, Catherine, for joining us today. Oh, it's a pleasure. Um, well, your, let's start off with the book. Uh, so your protagonist is Reverend Charles uh, Lachlan. Uh, I'm sure you probably get a lot of comparisons to Father Brandon. I don't know if that's fair or not. So what could you tell us about your character? People can make their own opinion. <laughs> well, um, well, first of all, you know, they always say when you're starting writing fiction, write about what you know. And um, if you if you look at my family tree, uh, they have I have all kinds of Protestant ministers um, in my background. My grandfather, my father, and my brother all were ministers. So I I knew about you know the life of of uh, of clergy, and uh, so that's why I decided to to uh, write with a protagonist that was a Protestant minister. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, some people think about Father Brown. There's an amazing kind of subgenre of mystery fiction with uh, clergy protagonists. I mean, there are, you know, um, <clears throat> Buddhist monks and there are um, medieval nuns and there are uh, modern ministers and priests, and just all kinds of it's 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 a pretty rich seam and mm -hmm. um, it doesn't seem like it's been tapped out. So I thought there's still room for yet another uh, clergyman protagonist. Uh, I guess they, they also probably make good characters because they, they, I guess they have to deal with good and evil, moral dilemmas. Uh, so, so I guess you can really layer that character, right? Yeah, that's, that's what attracts me about uh, that role, especially in the time period that I'm dealing with, which is the turn of the 20th century. Um, we get ministers who, who are at home in sort of upper middle class homes, and they're equally at home and uh, kind of fit in in slums and uh, all kinds of settings that people wouldn't question the appearance of a clergyman. You know, they just kind of fit in wherever. So that's handy. And they also deal with, you know, very uh, profound human issues, you know, um, you know, life and death. They are with people at their most, their happiest moments, yes. like marriages. They're with people at their saddest moments at the deathbed, for example. Um, and they grapple with um, all kinds of very profound human uh, issues. Um, well, you mentioned it. Uh, your story takes place at the turn of the century, around the 1900s. I'm sure that's an extra talent writing historical fiction. Were, were you drawn to historical fiction? Do you think your story just had to be told 120 years ago? Or why did you make that choice? Um, it came pretty naturally to me because in my previous life, I was an archivist and a historian. Um, and I studied history of Western Canada and, and delved pretty deeply into the history of the place where I live, which is Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was pretty natural when I decided to write fiction that I would, I would um, choose a historical time and place that I'm familiar with. And I, I had sort of all kinds of um, trivia, I guess you might say, local color, things that I could use for local color, just kind of hanging around in my, in my brain from, from that work that I could draw on. And so that's, it was very natural, I think, to do that. Um, I, I'm assuming there'd be a lot going on in Winnipeg around 1900. Um, forgive my lack of knowledge, but that's Red River riots would be just past and such, right? Um, well, there's there was the famous general strike, which would be a bit in the future in 1919. But mm -hmm. I mean, if you think of it, this that was the beginning around the turn of the 20th century of Winnipeg's big boom period. Winnipeg was kind of the Calgary of that time. You know, it was the young city. It was made by the railroad, not by oil. Um, and it was booming. 
it was an exciting place. It was growing. And uh, so um, that that was kind of makes it a, kind of an exciting time. It's true. I, I, it was sort of a central trading spot, right, too, I think? That's right. Was, yeah, it was kind of like the, the gateway of the West, you know, mm -hmm. it was huge numbers of wholesalers and goods would come here and be distributed throughout the rest of the Western Plains and so on. Uh, well, we're talking that Winnipeg would be a great setting for a book. I'm sure your first book was in it, but I read that you very quickly shift off to Scotland in this book. So <laughs> did you do that as just an excuse to go do research in Scotland or was there another reason why you want to? Uh, well, again, it was kind of a personal thing because um, my own ancestors are from Scotland and my family always uh, sort of identified as Scottish. I mean, Scottishness was really important um, to our kind of family identity, uh, for which I blame my father, uh, <laughs> who had the whole rig, you know, he had the kilt and the little daggery thingy and all that uh, stuff like that. Um, so I got quite intrigued by the possibility of sending my characters to Scotland, uh, because my characters too are of Scottish descent. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it'd be interesting for Winnipeg characters to kind of collide with Scotland. And that whole idea um, intrigued me. And since it, it takes me a while to write a book, I needed to set it in a place that I at least was interested in and that would sustain my interest over a, a fair period of time. Fair enough. Um, so So Many Winding is the second of three books. So the first would be in Winnipeg. Right. Is the third, the third one out yet? The third one will come back to Winnipeg and it will be the winter book. Um, <laughs> the, the first book was the summer book and the middle book is the Scotland book. And then the, the third and last book in the trilogy will be the winter book because you can't you can't have a Winnipeg trilogy without a winter book. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been to Winnipeg in the winter, but I could imagine it's very, very cold, especially 100 years ago. <laughs> well, yeah, that's... Uh, you said that, yeah, it's, it's really <laughs> and it's still cold. We don't have summer yet. No, uh, no. Yeah. But it also would be a fab, it's, it's going to give me an opportunity to, to insert curling into the book. <laughs> there has to be curling too. That curling was around that long? Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, sure, okay. it was outside too. It was, yeah, the, the rinks were yeah. outside, many of them, although they were starting <laughs> to be inside. Um, well, actually, let's keep it with Winnipeg a little bit. Um, Winnipeg, modern day. What's the literary scene like in Winnipeg? Um, I'd say it's pretty thriving. We've got, um, um, we're starting to get quite a number of crime writers, which, which has really happened only over the last, I would say, 15 years. Um, but now, now there's quite a few. We have, um, like, um, five or six or seven uh, publishing companies. It's pre pretty thriving, though small, they tend, they're small uh, publishers, but um, we have a wonderful bookstore that hosts, um, launches McNally Robinson. Um, it's a treasure for any com community to have, and it's like a, a hub for the literary scene here. Um, so uh, we're we're small, but we are uh, lively. I would say we have a we have a writers' festival called Thin Air, and um, yeah, it's a good place to be a writer. Excellent. Um, you and I were talking a little bit earlier, and one subject we wanted to bring up is how you dislike being called a cozy writer. You prefer the term traditional. A lot of people would sort of consider that the same thing. So how do you see it different? Well, um, yeah, I was telling you that I, I don't really like the, the name cozy for the kind of book that I write. Mm -hmm. um, I, I find it kind of demeaning and dismissive as if, um, you know, uh, and, and I, I have only sort of, uh, I, I don't have statistical knowledge about this, but many writers of this kind of book are women and many of the readers of these books are women. And I, I kind of have a feeling that that might have something to do with this kind of smarmy label, cozy, as if the books don't have some meat to them. Um, you know, as if 
it's not really crime unless it's noir or hard edge. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I think uh, that's why I don't like that term. I like the term traditional mystery better because I think the kind of book that I write harkens back to that kind of um, golden age of, of mystery writing, mostly British, the British tradition, Agatha Christie, yeah. um, and those kinds of, of folks. Um, and it's true that um, most of the violence tends to happen off stage, and most of the sex also happens to happen off stage. But uh, I think that doesn't mean that uh, there isn't kind of meat in the in the books, and that they don't deal with uh, important issues. Um, my books are very character oriented. I think mm -hmm. I'm very interested in character and character interaction, and that. And I agree with Joy Fielding last night on that webinar when she said that she feels that plot comes out of character. And I think that way too. Um, and that they're, so they're, um, and I think that's character is important and human interaction is important. And uh, so I just prefer, I just prefer the term traditional mystery to cozy. Perfect. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you too. So I'm in the same camp. I I write more of a traditional, uh, but it's often considered cozy. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. oh, there's, there's different. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for Crimes of Canada, it's you're you are nominated for the traditional mystery. So. That's true. Yeah, which is good. Which is good. Yeah. yeah. So uh, good luck with that. I believe the awards are coming up uh, next week on Thursday. So good luck in your category. I know you are you're in one of the tighter races. So. <laughs> I'm not the awards. I don't know who's going to win, but uh, I know all the books in your category are great books. So, uh, thank you. Good luck. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for doing this interview today. And uh, thank you for everyone who's watching.